What's up everybody, Marvin Leonard here. Welcome back to Action Base. In this video, we're gonna be talking about if my business model is better than private label. I wanna break down private label real quick and I broke it down into eight steps and I'm gonna I'm gonna break down each one of those. Obviously, there's, a, there's more that goes into private label. There's a few sub steps in all of these and that you need to do if you wanna be successful with private label. But at the end of the video or towards the end of the video, I will reveal what my business model is and we'll see if it's better than private label. Is this a private label killer? I don't know, we're gonna find out. So let's get into private label. But before we get into this juicy topic of is private label better or is my secret uh, way of selling on Amazon better? Uh, if you're new to this channel, which most of you guys are, we talk entrepreneurship, passive income and creating an online business. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing. All right. All right, so I broke down private label into eight simple steps, okay? There's, like I said before, there's sub steps into each one of these that you're gonna have to do in order to be successful with private label. Private label, you can't just come in, throw a product on Amazon and expect to be successful. The days of you just throwing cat earrings or cat necklaces or fidget spinners or, you know, whatever, and you may, you just throw, it on, throw a listing on there, half-ass everything, make 30 grand, those, those days are far and few, those days are long gone, okay? So now there's a lot more competition in every business model on Amazon, but with private label, you really need to know what you're doing. So if you're gonna learn from somebody, make sure you learn from somebody who's very experienced in private label. I'm gonna break these down, um, and the first step is product research. Your product lives and dies with product research. If you have a shit product, marketing that product through PPC or, or through a social presence is only gonna expose that product as a shit product, okay? You want to have a good product that people actually want and you want to get on a listing that ha doesn't have a ton of competition. If it does have a moderate amount of competition, you can still get in to compete if there's room for improvement, if there's room for improving the listing, if there's room for improving the product. You can still come in and, and compete with those people, but just know that if you're just going in and just copying their listing and copying their product, you're not going to be successful with Perf Label. All right, so then the next step, after you've done your product research, product research takes a while. Product research, you know, you really wanna, you really wanna dedicate some time to doing product research. After you've found the product that you wanna promote, uh, sorry, after you've found the product that you wanna sell, then you're gonna contact your suppliers through Alibaba. Alibaba is just a website that a lot of manufacturers go onto and they you know, use that as a platform for people to be able to contact them so then they can get business. So after you've, you've contacted the supplier and you've determined which supplier you wanna work with that gives you the best rate, that um, you know, is the easiest to work with and you know, that's who you wanna build a relationship with, then you're going to create a shipping plan. I'm not gonna go into the details of a shipping plan, you pretty much just go onto your Seller Central. You're gonna need to, find, you're gonna need to get a UPC code and then you're gonna create a shipping plan to an Amazon warehouse from your Chinese uh, manufacturer. Then they're gonna ship it out through air or through sea. Typically everybody does sea because it's cheaper, but it is gonna take on average three to four weeks for your inventory to get to the Amazon warehouse. In that three to four weeks, a lot happens. Amazon moves very fast. So in three to four weeks, you could have had 10 suppliers, oh, excuse me, 10 um, competitors and in those three to four weeks, now you have 50 competitors, you know, 20 competitors. You never know. So that that is a big negative with C shipping. If you find a product that you can make profitable through um, air shipping, then that's the route I would go to, at least for your, your first shipment. After you kind of settled in, you've kind of, you know, held your place on, on page one, you can order through C with a plenty of time before you run out so that you can keep that top listing and not have to pay air every single time. After you create your shipping plan, while you're waiting for your shipment to come in, if you haven't, if, if your shipment arrives on Amazon and you haven't created your listing, you haven't done all of this, what are you even doing, okay? You have, you have three to four weeks for your shipment to get to Amazon and in that time you should make the best use of your time, right? So you should create a listing, do your keyword research, you know, get a photographer, whether it's on Fiverr, whether you're gonna do it yourself, you know, so get that sample from your, you can wait for it to get there and then, you know, do a removal order and get the um, get the products into yourself or to your photographer. My suggestion would be to get uh, a sample. I, I always did a sample to myself and a sample to my photographer. And then my photographer would take all the pictures and once I was happy with all of that, I would start creating my listing and my stuff is going to the Amazon warehouse at this point. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to do keyword research. 
And you, then after you've done your photos, your keyword research, you're gonna wanna optimize your listing, optimize your title, optimize your backend search links, optimize everything so that people can actually find your listing. So assuming now your shipment is at the Amazon warehouse, you're gonna need to work on getting your reviews. You, I would not recommend launching with without reviews, okay? Nobody wants to be that first person to try out a product. If your product has zero reviews, nobody wants to be that first person to, to, um, to buy that product and test it out for themselves to find out if it's good or not. So I would recommend you do the early review program through Amazon. Uh, there used to be a lot of ways to do it through Facebook groups, uh, through Telegram, through um, you know, friends and family. I would not recommend doing those. If you have any connection with anybody that's gonna be reviewing your product on social media, Amazon can track all that. And lately, uh, there's been a lot of drama with, with reviews getting completely wiped. So let's say you do five fake reviews to, to be able to launch your product. And over the course of your, your listing, over the you know the year of your listing being active, you accumulated two three hundred reviews. All of those are getting wiped. So you don't want to kind of you don't want to mess around with this because this is a big part of your listing is how many reviews you have, how many review how many reviews you have, and how good the, those reviews are. So I would suggest the early review program. You pay Amazon a little fee, and then they're going to give you a certain amount of reviews that are legitimate. After you've gotten your reviews, you're going to want to do a launch. Uh, the most popular one's viral launch. Okay. And they've had a lot of success. A lot of people also complain about them. So that, that is completely up to you. I'm not gonna get into that, but you're gonna wanna launch and do a giveaway. After you've done the giveaway, you're gonna do PPC. PPC is just Amazon's way of advertising you know, their product. Every time you see a sponsored um, product at the top of your whatever you searched, those are people, those people are running PPC on their product. And this is just uh, something I recommend for people doing pro uh, private label is to create a social presence. Okay, private label, to be successful in private label, you're creating a brand. Okay, you're not just, you're not just a private labeler, you're, you're a brand, right? So your product is a brand and that's what you wanna do. That's how you wanna come in thinking, uh, this is my brand, you know, this is my product, whatever, whatever your product may be, this is my brand that I wanna promote and grow. So I would suggest doing some sort of social presence to kind of grow awareness of your brand and make it a little more legitimate. All right, so that is private label. There's a lot of steps in here, right? And there's a lot of sub steps within all of these. So now I'm gonna tell you guys my business model and then we're gonna see if it's better than private label. And my business model is wholesale. So before I continue, I just wanna make it very clear. I have experience with private label. I've done private label in the past. I've had failures with private label. I've had successes with private label. And a lot of wholesalers that are on YouTube or social media they usually talk down upon private label, people that are doing private label, but if you can, if you really listen to what they're saying, they don't really know what it takes to be successful on private label um, because they don't have any experience with it. Okay, I have experience with both, so that's why I'm breaking both of these down and then telling you which one I think is better. So, wholesale. These are the four steps of wholesale. Um, you're going to find a supplier or a manufacturer. In wholesale, there's a lot of different names for your suppliers, uh, distributors, wholesalers, uh, liquidators, closeouts, but just to keep it simple, we're gonna refer to all of them as suppliers, okay? So you e either need to find a supplier that has a bunch of different brands, bigger brands, you know, big name brands that you can you can go and resell on, on Amazon, whether it be PlayStation, you know, KitchenAid, um, Microsoft, uh, Hasbro, Mattel, or you need to find a manufacturer of a smaller brand that you can work with directly. Both of these ways are great ways to start getting inventory in for your Amazon business. And both of these ways work. You, I typically go the supplier route, but I have manufacturers that I work with that are some of my best sellers. Okay, so after you've done that, you're gonna review an inventory list. These suppliers usually have an inventory list, a CSV file, a spreadsheet, that you're gonna plug into an analyzer tool that's gonna compare it to, Amazon's to Amazon so that you can know the sales rank, your profit margins, and all of that. After you've gotten that list and you've gone through it, then you're gonna do product research. So you found a product on that list that you're interested in, you're gonna go on to the listing, look at Keepa, really break down the numbers on how many units you need to order. You know, what is the lowest it's ever sold for? What is the highest it's ever sold for? Don't get caught into the superficial price that it is at right now. If a product on average for the last year sells around $50 and right now because everybody else is sold out and is waiting to get restocked, the price is $100, it doesn't mean it's gonna sell for $100, right? You might get a one or two sales for $100, but then the price is gonna drop down to back to about its average. 
So you don't want to just jump in because you see that price and you're like, oh shit, you know, I want to get in on it and make some big money because the average is a lot lower than that. Okay, so then you're gonna do product research, make sure you know how, how much it sells for, make sure you're okay with the lowest price it's ever been if you're okay with getting that margin. Uh, and then you know you need to know how many you're gonna order. I typically order inventory of every two weeks just to maximize my cash flow to keep money keep to keep money coming in, and I can reorder um, more inventory. Um, and then you're gonna ship to Amazon, whether it's a pallet or whether it's a smaller shipment. You're gonna ship it to Amazon, and then you're done. That's it. You don't have to create a listing. You don't have to do keyword research. You don't have to take photos. You don't have to get reviews. You don't have to run PPC because we're focusing on big brands or smaller brands that have already made a name for themselves on Amazon. That's what we're focusing on. So we don't have to do uh, PPC or any of these other things because the brand has already done that for us. The brand has already created that trust with its community, with its customers, okay? All right, so that was wholesale. So now we're gonna get into the topic of private label or wholesale, which is better for you. I'm gonna tell you which business model is better for you. So the business model that I think is the best for you is whichever business model you're going to actually stick with. I know it sounds cheesy and it's not what you want to hear. You want to hear a concrete, you John or you Zach or you Tiffany, you need to do wholesale or you need to do private label, but I can't do that for you. Both of these business models are proven to work time and time again. So whichever business model you're going to actually stick with, whether it's you want to go and create a brand through private label and promote that brand and that's your brand or you wanna go and find brand name products that have already done the work for you and you're gonna sell those products. Whichever one it is, you just need to go the route that you're actually gonna stick with. Okay, don't, don't do half-ass both and get nowhere, you know? Just pick one, in my opinion, I would pick one and just go all in. You know, there's, there's downsides to private label and there's downsides to wholesale. Wholesale, you're gonna reach out to a lot of suppliers and a lot of suppliers are not gonna have the products you want or some some manufacturers aren't gonna to wanna to work with you. With private label, you're gonna to have to deal with hijackers, you're gonna to have to deal with competitors, you know, you're know, you gonna to have to deal with everybody, with other people jumping on your listing and, and being the exact product that you are and, you know, and now you have more competition. So it just, whichever business model you're actually gonna stick with, is gonna be the best option for you. You can have success with both, right? So which route do you wanna take? Which route appeals more to you? At the end of the day, they both work. They're both gonna make you money. You can create a great business with both of them, okay? Take the time to learn the process and it's gonna be hard. Both routes are gonna be hard. Like I said, I've had success and failures with with private label. I've had success and, and failures with wholesale, but wholesale is where I decided to dedicate all of my time and that is where I found the most massive amount of success for myself, for my business. So both work, pick one, and then you will get that success. At, just, just have to trust the process. You just have to keep going even if you run into a lot of obstacles. All right, everybody, that's the video for today. The best option is both wholesale and private label, whichever one you like. Sorry, you guys, I sorry I didn't give you that concrete answer you were looking for, but they both will work for you as long as you stick with it. If you found any value out of this, drop me a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna be coming out with videos like this two to three times a week, Amazon related, affiliate marketing related, uh, entrepreneurship related. All right, and I'll see you guys in that next video.